was hot. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is actually one of my favorite tutorials I've made in a while. We got some really cool stuff going on for you. Five different trippy optic distortion effects. All these effects are pretty easy to pull off. We're gonna do the majority in After Effects, but I will show you a lot in Adobe Premiere as well. Other than that, only two things I need to tell you. Number one, top 10 VFX of the month. Episode two is airing next week. If you guys want a chance for your work to be featured at the end of that video, hop into my Discord, link down below, and post your work in the React submission missions channel and the second thing i want to tell you which is very important remember to like comment subscribe for that youtube algorithm the channel is up like 35 percent this month thank you guys so much for all the support let's get right into the video all right guys so starting off with our first effect here we're going to get right into it we're going to do this in after effects if you're using premiere with that dynamic link i've said it a million times find whatever part in the footage you want to bring in after effects right click on it and click replace with after effects composition so for our first one we're going to create this cool little wiping distortion effect that you see here and you don't have to do it in this way that they're using it. You can use in any way to create whatever transition you like or whatever distortion effect you like. And it's very easy to pull this off too. So in After Effects, you just need to look up in your effects and presets, CC Scale Wipe. Go ahead and place that on the clip that you'd like. And it's as easy as just changing around some of your settings for how you want this to look. So let's go ahead and set this direction. Let's set it to negative 90 to start. We're going to go ahead and at the beginning of our timeline here, in our effect controls, we're going to click the stopwatch for stretch to set a keyframe. We're going to drag a little bit, and then we're just going to crank up this value. And just like that, we've created this cool little distortion effect. Very easy, very simple. Like I said, we got a lot of cool stuff in this video, and it's not going to be taking up your precious time. If you guys want to recreate the original transition I showed you where it kind of bounces back, this is where this switches, so pretty good timing. Let's go ahead and create another keyframe here. So we're going to open up the effects for this. So just open up these little drop down menus under CC Scale Wipe. Just go ahead and click to make another keyframe there drag a bit and let's set this into the negative drag a bit more and set it back to zero very easy so here's the quick little animation we made with all those different keyframes so stretches to the left stretches to the right and then goes back to normal if you want that to be a bit more drawn out just grab that last keyframe and drag it out to give it a bit more time with the animation so there you go easy as that and again please don't limit yourself just to whatever i'm showing you you can create so many different effects so many different things just by playing around with the effects and knowing what you have available to you with these creative tools this isn't even a keyframe this is just me playing with the effects there's another little alternate look all right so next effect here's another little real live example this is another video that you guys highly requested so if anything else from this video stands out to you we can make some more tutorials on it right here around the 30 second mark also if you guys are interested in any of these we've made tutorials talking about this offsetting and creating clones out of it so right here you can see the words on his shirt is kind of projecting out at the camera now i've already made a tutorial way back in the day where we talked about taking something on your shirt on your clothes or an object in specific and having it kind of float off now we're going to do some Something similar here Let's start off by creating an easy little mask here you guys can rotoscope to make this easier if you like if you're working on something more complex I'll leave some tutorials down below if you don't know what rotoscoping even is but we're just gonna do a simple mask over on the graphic on future shirt here so I'm gonna grab my pen tool I'm gonna start at the beginning of my timeline here and I'm going to just select and I'm just going to make this little selection here now let's see what a track mask can do you never really know so once I connected my mask you'll see everything goes away except for what's in my mask so let's select that layer let's click m on our keyboard to show our mask options and then we're going to go ahead and change the mode to none so we have our mask but we're not switching anything around as of now so now we can right click on that mask while it's up we can click track mask and let's go ahead and just see what a track mask can do here so over on the right you're going to see the tracker window that just popped up once you click that method is position scale and rotation go ahead and click play for that it's actually tracking decently well. Now, if you're not getting a good track with your results, what you can do is you can A, you can do some manual keyframing. And if you're doing something simple, again, it's not really gonna be that hard. So once you have whatever it is you're trying to isolate masked out, you have your subject isolated, let's go ahead and click Control D on this layer to duplicate it. I'm gonna right click and rename this footage to original. And I'm gonna delete the mask off of that original bottom layer. So delete the mask. Now I'm going to click M on this top layer. Let's go ahead and right click and rename this to optics logo. And all you need to do here is go to your effects and presets, search for optics compensation here, place that on your optics subject layer, the one that has the mask. 
also make sure that this mask we're going to click m to open that up again is set to add that way we just hide these for now whenever you're only showing this mask layer this is isolated whenever you're showing this this is just normal background footage so once that's set to add in your effect controls with your optics compensation let me just show you what we can do here so you'll see if i do this it looks like it's kind of just peeling away so let's set it up to be reverse lens distortion now you'll see if we crank that up, you get this sort of projecting towards the view effect going on here, which is pretty cool. You can also change your view center. So let's just click this little selection. Let's put that in the center of our graphic here and let's set up the keyframe animation. So at the beginning of our timeline, we're gonna go up to our effect controls and we're gonna go to field of view, like that to set your keyframe, drag a little bit, and let's pull this thing up. So here is the animation that we just created. I really like how this one looks. It's a really simple thing, but you get this kind of 3D projecting effect off of it that I really love a lot. Because this is also isolated in its own layer as well, you can apply any color grading, any effects onto there if you want to kind of spice it up. All right, guys, so number three on this list, I want to talk about creating some transitions with optics compensation or any other optics distortion effect. This is one of my favorite transitions here. I created this from scratch. Let's go to our project bin, create a new composition here. For this composition, I'm going to make the frame rate 30. I'm going to make the duration around two seconds. And I'm going to name this ring animation. And you don't have to name it ring animation. That's just what I made this a ring that expands. You can make any other shape and have that liquid bending distortion across whatever shape you want. So from here, I'm going to toggle my transparency off. I'm going to grab my ellipse tool in the top. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to make a little circle in the center of my screen. Let's hold down control and just position that here. Now you can also go up to window and you can go to align. Make sure that's showing. And with this align window, you can just align this in the center. Also, if you have any fill here, make sure you just click on this fill, the words, not the color, and you set this to none. Let's click on stroke, make sure it's a white color. The stroke width is at 10 pixels. So let's set up an animation for this circle so it kind of grows out. So very simple, let's open up this ellipse options here, open up stroke. Let's start the stroke width at 200 and keyframe it. I'm gonna drag 30 frames, so one second, and we're gonna go ahead and shrink this. So maybe down to 65 for our width. Here's what that looks like. We also want to change the scaling, so we'll click S. We'll start this at around 50. Now, before we scale that, let's first set our anchor point because you see this bad boy is all the way over there. So grab this tool. This is the pan behind or your anchor tool. Find your anchor point for this shape layer and put that in the center of your circle. That way, whenever we scale it, it's not going to shrink down to wherever the anchor point is. So now click S on your keyboard with that layer selected. Change your scale to maybe something like 50. Keyframe your scale. Again, scroll a bit. I'm going to scroll to that one second mark and I'm going to scale this up like crazy. So maybe 250. So here's what that looks like. Literally just created a circle scaling up. Pretty simple. Now let's add a bit of blur. So we'll go to effects and presets and I'll search for a fast box blur and I'll place that on my circle here with my fast blocks, but with my fast box blur, I'm going to at the beginning, set this to around 60 keyframe that blur radius. Let's drag to the end of this animation and we're going to put this at around 250. Now we have this blurred circle here and we have these soft edges on the inside. We can also apply a glow effect onto this. So just the normal built in After Effects glow. And this is very bright. So we'll go ahead and grab our glow threshold, lower our glow threshold. I'm going to lower my glow intensity, something around 0 0.3. Keep my threshold around 75. So here's what that looks like. You've created this simple little circle animation growing up. So what we can do now is let's pop back to our normal composition wherever you've been working out of. I'm going to go over to my project bin here. I'm going to grab that composition that we just made. Mine is called ring animation. Drag that into the composition. Start it wherever you want the effect. Here's what that looks like. Now, technically, you don't need the ring on the screen. You're just using this as a little placeholder. So you can hide the visibility of it. Just click this button. Now we're going to right click down here and create a new adjustment layer. In this adjustment layer, we'll just drag this so it starts where we want it to. Look up the caustics effect and place that on our adjustment layer. And we don't want this blue, so let's get rid of all of this color. So surface opacity, zero. You're gonna change this bottom layer to none. You're gonna change your water surface layer to the ring animation composition that we made earlier. So change it like that. Now you're already gonna start to see a little bit of ripple going on here. Let's also right click on this adjustment layer. I'm gonna rename this to 
optics wave so let's set our wave height to 0.5 here set our smoothing to 50 with our refractive index we can scale a bit and we'll set that to two so around where this is at its peak so we're just moving a couple frames over keyframe your, that refractive index move another couple of frames and then set that back to one just like that you're able to create some insane distortions Look, let's get rid of this kind of white vignette that you're seeing here just go over to lighting set the light intensity to zero and that's about it guys you can also mix in any other distortions so let's also look up an optics compensation drag that into the effect controls and let's drag and let's drag that optics compensation above the caustics here so let's start it super distorted in so we're going to set that at 150 Reverse that lens distortion so it's not all messed up. Keyframe your field of view, move a few frames, and set that back to, again, zero. And now you're just adding in some more distortion, and you're getting super funky with it, super crazy with it. So hope you guys do like that one. It's a really awesome transition that you can create just by mixing together some of your distortion techniques. All right, guys, so number four, this one's going to be probably one of the easiest on the list. That's just combining our optics effects with screen blending. And this is something you can do with literally any effects, but I think a lot of people overlook it. So for example, if we just click toggle switches and modes in After Effects, it's going to show our blending mode drop down and you can just change this to anything you want. And this goes with any other effect that you're making. I wanted to include this on the list because, because this could completely change something that you're working on and it's going to allow you to create a bunch of different things. Giving you some other examples with our masked optics compensation, we can change that to something like add and now you get something completely different. Now you can see through it. You get this more ghosty kind of look. Here it is again, just change changing our overlay, just changing our blending mode. Usually the ones like add and screen give that sort of light projection effect. So let's actually hop into Adobe Premiere because this is something that you can do in Premiere fairly easily as well as within After Effects. And let's give you a little example for all you Premiere users out there. So I'm creating a new sequence here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste in some normal footage in Premiere so we can just start from scratch. So let's go ahead and just create some little optics blending mode effects. So step number one, let's duplicate this footage. So alt, click and drag up. Again, holding down alt, click, and that's how you can duplicate right off of that. Select this top duplication here, and we're going to mask the part that we'd like to isolate. I'm just gonna select this layer here, go up to opacity in my effect controls, click this free drop Bezier tool, and just draw and kind of cut off one side of the screen from the other. So we'll move those out the way. We'll connect this. So now if I hide this, you'll see we have one side masked out. You can go to your masking options in opacity and we can bump up our mask feather a tiny bit just to smooth out that edge. Let's show this bottom layer again. So let's select this top layer and let's go ahead and add some optics compensation. And everything you're doing here, you can also do in After Effects. You have the same exact tool set, same exact effects. Only difference is masking and opacity for Premiere. If I was in After Effects, I just, again, grab my pen tool, do the exact same thing. Just wanted to mention that. In Adobe Premiere, you don't have optics compensation, but you do have lens distortion. So you can look up lens distortion within Adobe Premiere. And again, for all you Premiere users, you can use the exact same steps I showed in After Effects. So number one and number two, but instead of using optics compensation, use lens distortion. Use lens distortion. It's pretty much the exact same thing. So we'll add that curvature, we'll put it at minus 100, and you're already seeing immediately some cool looking effects. And this is where you go in and you add your blending mode. If you want, you could just keep it on normal. I think this already looks pretty cool. But of course, you can always go back up to opacity here and you'll see your blending mode drop down. You guys can mess around with that, put it on something like screen or lighten. If you want it to be sort of looking like glass, you can make it darker. A lot really at your disposal. So there is number four. If you click the U key on your keyboard with this layer selected, it'll show all the keyframes here. You can select them, right click them, keyframe assistant, easy ease. You can go into your graph editor here. You can change those around. Whatever you want to do with it, it's all up to you. There's no right or wrong way to customize this. So if you guys want to go into there, create some cool graph editing stuff, that is an option for you. All right, and number five, this is extremely easy. In Premiere, you can't do the exact same CC scale wipe that you can in After Effects. So I call this the wide boy effect, kind of similar to that scale width, but not as precise. So let's try and set that up. We'll hold down Alt, click and drag that clip up. Let's go ahead and mask. So under opacity in our effect controls for our newly duplicated clip, we'll grab our four point polygon mask here and let's go ahead and position this so it's cutting off half the screen. Now let's keyframe this. So 
keyframe, your scale width at the beginning. This actually ends right here, so I'll just drag this back a bit and we'll change the keyframe so it starts like right here. So grab your scale width and just stretch that out. If you want to, you can lower that a little bit. This way it's a little more transparent. So I, I recommend just tiny bit of feathering, maybe 10 to 20. So you can get the sort of stretch separation within Adobe Premiere. It's pretty cool. It's not as good as the CC scale way, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And there you go, the little Premiere version of creating some of these cool distortion effects. I hope you guys did enjoy. All right guys, and that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. I hope you did enjoy what we showed. I think it's some of the coolest effects we showed on the channel in a while. In my last video, we talked about Blender for the first time ever. If you wanna try out some free 3D, check out that tutorial. Again, comment what you wanna see next. Link me whatever video you want me to break down. Thank you so much for supporting. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.